scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Faith, they must go by the power of the Holy Spirit. While that is happening, we're going to begin praying in the Spirit everywhere inside here and those following online. We're praying. This is a prayer conference, and I want to request that we take 10 minutes at least to just pray in the spirit to prepare our spirit man for the mighty things that God is going to be doing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you visit us. Go ahead and begin to pray. You can pray while you're writing. Whether you are standing or sitting, the most important thing is that you are praying. Rada bagata bras sebeleke to shafras kebeleke to us. Elando shala gras kebeleke to us. Lega brata savara do shafres kebales. Rada bagata frate bereto sa de brake de belego. But ye building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Shada bagata bras kada belega sofran dos kebeleke to us. Randeze medeke to shala kraska vedeke desko parando sabris Vela shabreske vareto shabrende vereto skabriata Imbraka da barako shabreske vereto sebreke de beleke tos Is someone still praying? Krata baka da preske de vrende ke bereko siata La fraska vereto shabreske vereka tapriata They go from strength to strength Everyone that appear before the Lord in Zion, someone is praying. Kabaranto shalakos kavres kabereto sabriata kan. Lega de brante kabarato sabres kene belega de ko shalakata balaka tos. He das shani gata barata sabres kene belega de gata balata bos. Rata baka da brante kabereto skoto bres kabereke te balados. La baraba da gata frate ke balas, raka da barato se prende ke bereto se preska da balagos, raba ka barato zozo pe ke te bele ke te prata ka da baruta se ke te balagos. Ana bende ke te bele ke te bereto se prata se ne ke te balagos. Somebody pray. He barato shalagata pras ke de barota se bregede. Shakata bakata barakata pras ke de belete ke de pras ke de gede belegeta. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, it defieth himself. It defieth himself. It defieth himself. Abalako shakra kusata prati ke belego to sofrati ke beletos. Shari bete beretos sofrati ke de beretos yana. Alabranda baratos sakus ke de beretos sofrati ke beretos yata bas. Alanda prati ke beretos ke de krete beretos yata. The Bible says the Spirit searches all things, 
Yeah, the deep things of God. Yeah, the deep things of God. Yeah, the deep things of God. Abo shale kabora sa sa fraska de bereko shale gret de bereko sia. Raba kata prande de bereko sa fraska de bereko sia sigetes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're still, um, when you're done writing your request, you don't need to come out yourself. There will be ushers there. You may just pass it to the person at the aisle and then they will give it to the usher so that it doesn't become rowdy. So once you're done writing your request, um, just pass it to the person by your left or right to the aisle and please ushers do well to just reach out so that um, we can collate everything together and bring it in front here in the name of Jesus hallelujah praise the name of the Lord can we take a minute or two to still pray you are declaring whilst you are praying in the spirit what you are saying is Lord I open up my capacity to receive everything that you have for me even today go ahead and pray declare that there is the hearing of faith and the working of miracles declare it even by the spirit the hearing of faith the working of miracles the hearing of faith the working of miracles the hearing of faith the working of miracles the hearing of faith I walk out of this place with an encounter I walk out of this place with a testimony I walk out of this place with an encounter I walk out of this place with a testimony I walk out of this place with an encounter I walk out of this place with a testimony I walk out of this place with an encounter and with a testimony to the glory of the name of the Lord For in Jesus mighty name we pray for in Jesus mighty name we pray do us good today O God breathe upon us by your spirit in the name of Jesus and let the God of wonders visit us today we vow to give you all the glory for in Jesus mighty name we pray God bless you. Please be seated. God's method has always been and will always be his word. God's method has always been and will always be his word. God's method for lifting is his word. God's method for restoration is his word. God's method for signs and wonders is his word. Hallelujah. God's method for the opening of doors is his word. The Bible says he sent forth his word. And his word healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. Hallelujah. Let me do a quick recap yesterday of, of yesterday's teaching. I think it's very important we taught yesterday on the wonder walking god and do well to go online get the teachings listen to it again the bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing hearing and hearing hearing that brings understanding and even by the word of god and i did tell us yesterday three very important points let me recap for emphasis number one we agreed and established yesterday that god is the all-powerful god do not forget this we took out time to shake away unbelief by exploring the credentials of God as captured in scripture. Hallelujah. He said that the Bible is a compendium of the walkings, the mighty walking power of God. From the Red Sea to the dethroning of arrogant kings, supernatural manifestations, and then Jesus, the incarnate one who came 
representing the father all of the mighty things that he did nature miracles healing the sick all of these were and remain attestations to the fact that god is the all-powerful god he says once have i spoken and twice have you heard that power belonged to god are we in agreement number two we did say that as powerful as god is he desires that his power and his glory be revealed in the lives of his people so god is not just all powerful he's not just almighty but that there is a yearning there is a desire to see his power and his glory revealed in the lives of his people this is very important the bible says in zephaniah 3 17 we agreed yesterday the lord in the midst of his people is mighty hallelujah psalm 107 and verse 21 says oh that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men to the children of men so god desires his power to be made manifest in my life and your life and that includes your business your job your family your health and everything that concerns you then number three was the point of action yesterday that god's wonder working power is only made manifest when we call upon him so that god's power operates based on a response system there has to be a call as an indication of humility and need from the earth hallelujah jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3 call unto me and i will answer you i will show you great and mighty things the bible says which thou knowest not that god's wonder working power is made manifest when we call upon him scripture says in psalm 145 verse 18 that the lord is nigh them that call upon him not just those that need him not just those that are in trouble them that call upon him at midnight paul and silas bound hand and feet are we together locked up in prison the bible says they prayed and they sang and the prisoners heard them they called upon god and he came in majestic power shook the foundations of the prison and the bible records that all doors open i like that rendition all doors not some all doors financial doors health doors all doors open hallelujah and we wrapped up yesterday by saying that there are two dimensions to calling god number one we call god through heartfelt prayer heartfelt prayer not careless prayer not prayer that comes while you are distracted prayer that your heart your all is committed to the bible says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous avail much not the careless and unintentional prayer of the believer it has to be fervent it has to be effectual your heart has to be in it hallelujah and then we said that the second way we call upon god is through the mystery and the power of perfected praise praise that is from the heart and i did tell us that the high point in praising god is not dancing the high point in praising god is not singing the high point in praising god is not chanting or recitation not even crying the high point is when we acknowledge him remember yes that if you're dancing you're singing and whatever else you do does not translate to acknowledging his good works you are not praising him proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7 trust in the lord with all your heart the bible says and lean not to thine own understanding it says next verse in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path verse 7 says be not wise in your own understanding it says fear the lord and turn away from evil so we call upon the lord in prayer and in praise and i did observe yesterday that most believers know how to pray but few people know how to praise with understanding nigerians know how to dance we know how to shout and that is wonderful but it's amazing that in all of this sometimes it ends up as religiosity and even becomes sin 
because you find out that it just delves to the marketing of flesh with no spiritual substance in it while it is wonderful to use every scriptural mechanism to praise god the real praise comes from the heart lord i acknowledge you for all that you have done you are the reason why i'm alive are we together the psalmist will write he says bless the lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord O my soul then he says and forget not his benefits he does not stop there he starts listing the benefits who forgives your iniquities your sins are we together who healed thee from your diseases this delivers you from your destruction and so on and so forth that's what it means to acknowledge him this in this session very quickly i want to give us a charge as we pray and trust god to release mighty testimonies upon our lives i want to talk very briefly on the power of god the power of god the power of god first chronicles chapter 29 please and verse 11 when we see it when we have it projected i'll request that we read together first chronicles 29 and verse 11 our discussion is on the power of god we want to explore a bit to understand what exactly is the power of god when the bible talks about the almightiness and the power of god um, we need to stretch ourselves a bit to see the various dimensions and and what essentially what the power of god is about so let's read this projected ready one to read thine O lord is the greatness uh -huh, and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is thine thine is the kingdom O lord and thou art exalted as head above very powerful scripture not above some but above all please be seated god bless you and thank you every time you watch a man of god or you watch any kind of supernatural occurrence happen usually we credit unusual manifestations to the presence of power it seems as though our world has a very inherent ability to recognize power whether it is demonic whether it is from god the most important thing is we know subconsciously that power is responsible for unusual outcomes am i right on that say for instance you do not necessarily say i am powerful for walking on this stage because it's very human and very natural to walk the bones were built to be able to carry my weight but once i begin to float and fly now that becomes another dimension the next the next discussion becomes to verify the source of the power not the absence of power am i right on that so we know that every time power is present the the striking feature of the presence of power is an unusual manifestation that many times defies the natural course of nature am i right on that yes for instance it is usual for someone to build wealth gradually by the spirit of god through the dignity of kingdom integrity and from an economic standpoint you can predict that under normal circumstances maybe in five to ten years a little above that you know you can be sure that something like that will happen but if in one year or even one month that individual accumulates the results of 10 years now we have to vet carefully as to the source of power but we cannot deny that was there was an outsourced ability that produced that outcome am i right on that yes if i told you that i were going back to abuja and then you didn't find me in the airport you didn't find me in any vehicle and suddenly i call you and say i'm there <laughs> hallelujah yes i know science is still exploring telepathy and all of that but um you would have to say okay this is it's either this is philip's strategy are we together or some kind of demonic thing but i'm just trying to say that everybody who has been on earth for a while is familiar with the whole idea of power we may not um, understand the concept 
in terms of its definition but we cannot hide the effect of it we know that everywhere power is available there must be unusual manifestations unusual occurrences that means we have come to agree subconsciously that power is related to unusual manifestations everywhere there is power there will always be unusual manifestations power seems to sustain the ability to break the normal occurrence of things to interrupt status quo hallelujah do you believe that i'm saying that because that is what will begin to happen to you from today in the name of jesus christ that there will be unusual accelerations supernatural possibilities in your life and i am telling you up front so that when men ask you by what means did you achieve this you will simply tell them the great power of god this is what the power of god is able to do hallelujah praise the name of the lord so we know that every unusual manifestation on earth is credited to power when jesus walked upon the earth he did not start his ministry even though he was the word incarnate even though from age 12 the bible records that he was in the temple learning under the doctors of the law you would think with the abundance of the revelation that he had already from learning the law he was fit enough to start ministry jesus himself had to delay his manifestation until he went to john the bible says at age 30 he was found at the jordan with john while he was baptizing and john looks at jesus and says behold the lamb that taketh away the sins of the world hallelujah and john declined initially to baptize jesus he said i am not worthy to untie even the latchet of your shoe and jesus tells him suffer it to be so that all scripture be fulfilled and john dips jesus in water and your bible says when he came out of the waters the heavens open am i right on that and it says the holy ghost came upon him in the similitude of a dove and there was a statement from heaven he says this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased then the bible says the holy spirit drove jesus into the wilderness and there he prayed and he fasted being tempted of the devil he overcame satan by what was written and then the bible records your bible records that he returned in the power of the spirit that was the commencement of his ministry not just with illumination and knowledge as powerful as knowledge is knowledge without a divine engracing will only turn you into a historian with no ability to defend your propositions this is what we lack largely in the body of christ i do not believe that we are in ignorance the challenge is that we say so many things that we have not obtained the grace or the empowerment to prove for instance we say that god is a lifter for instance we say god restores and we shout amen truthfully so except that that statement remains barren until the power to make it happen have comes are we together yes and the world that we live in today is the world that is obsessed with evidence that when you say god does this he can do this he can do that they honestly will not pay attention to you in fact here's what jesus said jesus himself saw a fig tree right a fig tree that was green looking very attractive and he himself was deceived by that fig tree he got there and not finding any fruit he caused the fig tree that means you should not attract people that much without nothing to give i'm saying that because in the name of jesus nobody will ask you from today where is your god yeah. nobody will ask you for how long will you keep saying without us seeing in the name of jesus christ the kingdom was built to advance on the strength of the speakings of god and the performance of his power do not forget the speakings of god and the performance of his power one more time the speakings of god and the performance of his power that means everything god says he wants to do 
he does not just say he wants to do are we together so your life must subscribe to that template where for everything you say there is the grace component to be able to defend it so when you tell someone for instance that my god is able to open a door for you they say i believe it there needs to be a corresponding performance hallelujah praise the name of the lord so there is a desperate need for power now in in the church especially the pentecostal charismatic circles we're not unfamiliar with the manifestations of power at least we've seen many things that relate to power healing falling under the anointing and so on and so forth but for the average believer i think subliminally we have come to believe that power is the exclusive preserve of men of god pastors apostles prophets so once you are not called into the fivefold ministry generally your heart does not yearn for power maybe you would yearn for wisdom maybe you would yearn for favor but once we mention power we generally say i don't need it i'm not doing anything on the pulpit but notice your jesus the very church that we are part of now was founded upon the ministry of power jesus told the disciples he says tarry ye in jerusalem after three years of intense mentorship he said you are still not qualified to go and start you would not be the true church until you are endued with power so he says tarry ye in jerusalem until ye be endued with power and on the day of pentecost acts chapter 2 and verse 1 the bible says now when the day of pentecost was fully come the bible says they were with one accord in one place verse 2 says suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it came and filled the house and filled all day that were sitting and then the bible says there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon how many each of them 120 it sat upon every one of them it sat upon every one of them and they were all filled i like the word all filled not some filled they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance now when you back down to acts chapter 1 from verse 7 and 8 they met jesus and said will you at this point restore the nation of israel and he said it is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the father has put within his care he says but ye shall receive power verse 8 after that the holy ghost is come upon you he never said you will receive an information he never said you will receive encouragement he never said you will receive the basis for controversy he said you shall receive power you shall receive power notice he never said i will give you power he said you shall receive meaning it is within your power to reject it if i say you shall receive something you can choose as an act of your volition to reject it and sadly many have rejected the power of the holy spirit because we only give it a pentecostal outlook for want of word we just feel that I'm, I'm not interested in getting people to fall down. I'm not interested in prophesying. I'm just a great businessman that God has called. I'm a kingdom financier. Leave the power to the apostles and prophets and pastors. But that is not scriptural. It takes power. Please listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. It takes power to birth the purposes of God in your life and my life. It takes more than good intention. There are many reasons the Bible tells us to, to contend for power. One of it is that the whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world, it says, ye are of God and the whole world, the whole world includes your village, includes Nigeria, includes America, includes anywhere at all. It lies in wickedness. So Psalm 66 and verse 3 says, Say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you through the greatness of your power through the greatness of your power number two the purposes of god can never be achieved in the strength of the flesh it is important that we come to terms with this you cannot produce god's dimension of results in the strength of the flesh he says for by the arm of flesh is that true 
the arm of flesh is limited nobody is able to do much with the arm of the flesh hence the need for power so the angel comes to a young virgin espoused to joseph called mary and then he brings a very strange salutation and he told her that she was going to be with child without the cooperation of a natural man and mary said well i believe god but how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man and here was gabriel's reply he says the power of the highest shall overshadow you mary was not a preacher mary was not a missionary mary was not a woman of god like deborah or some of these warriors she was just a young virgin who was espoused to a carpenter and yet she required that much power the power of the highest will overshadow you that is the basis of the possibilities that will happen in your life the same thing happened to elizabeth elizabeth the wife of zechariah for a long time she had been without a child and gabriel appears to zechariah bringing him glad tidings that his wife would have a child and the bible even says this about john the prophet that you call the baptist that john was filled with the spirit right from his mother's womb the nature of his assignment mandated that he was born with power are we together very important the ministry of power cannot be downplayed especially in our world today believers have a lot of knowledge but the power component has largely been missing and i'm suggesting that the primary reason why i think and believe that people have rejected power because in truth they do not know what power is the idea of power that we have in church is just falling down and standing up and people rising from wheelchairs and that is wonderful but that is a, a very minute fraction of the vast possibilities that comes when you have power so my assignment is to charge us very briefly what exactly is the power of god what exactly is the power of god when we say i have the power of god or i want the power of god what am i saying we say it we sing it we cry it we roll on the ground desiring power and we say lord send your power what exactly are you asking for more love more power more of you in my life we sing these songs all the time more love that is understandable more power so if i random pick people from this wonderful congregation and i say please come and stand beside me and describe for us what exactly you have been praying for because you see it's difficult the mind from a psychological standpoint the mind thinks in pictures the reason why we're not able to understand a lot of spiritual concepts is because it takes the holy ghost to help you the way we understand from elementary knowledge when you begin to teach children from elementary school they tie objects to words am i right on that so when you say orange you draw an orange when you say mango you draw a mango so if i tell you a ball your mind knows what to relate with but if i say power what exactly do you think of the closest thing that comes to your mind is fire am i right or the sun or anything that carries a semblance of force and invincibility but what exactly is the power of god so that you will know what is going to come upon you so that you will walk in that consciousness i have the power of god and then what does it do to what end do i desire and need this power power that was so important jesus did not ignore it the early church did not ignore it tarry until ye be endued with power is god speaking to someone already thank you jesus so what exactly is the power of god what is the power of god i'll give you four descriptions or definitions as a charge 
sadly we're not looking extensively into the subject of power so i'll just give us four descriptions to help guide our understanding as we release our faith to receive are you ready number one what is the power of god the power of god is his agency for creation the power of god is the tool the agency that he uses for creation that every time god wants to create create naturally to create in a life the agency that he deploys for that creation is called his power we considered it yesterday jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 17 our lord god remember thou hast made the heavens and the earth help me by thy great power so every time god wants to make every time god wants to create that means a new body part when god wants to make anything new my goodness it is his power that means every time the power of god arrives in a location do not wonder why things can be created don't be surprised that someone can come with a missing body part and in a moment creation happens because the power of god is the agency that is responsible for creation hallelujah do you believe that our lord god the prophet says thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and thy outstretched arm in second peter chapter 1 and verse 3 second peter 1 and verse 3 apostle peter is giving us a very profound perspective second peter 1 let's look at verse 3 for sake of time 3 it says according as his divine power had given unto us how many things all things god's power is a giver it can provide possibilities to your life according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness that means whatever is missing in your life that you cannot find it is within the jurisdiction of god's power to make for manifestation and to make for creation you believe that shout amen who sinned that this man was born blind who sinned was it him or his father jesus replies neither but that the glory of the lord be revealed and the power of god was released and that man was healed do you not see the wonder walking power of god all through scriptures every time there was need for supernatural manifestation it came by the power of god that means if you are bankrupt of the power of god in your life there are many divine possibilities as captured and revealed in scripture that may never find expression in your life never find expression in your life it takes power the agency for creation the agency for manifestation i don't need to be afraid of what is not yet in my life now because the power of god is able to transport realities from the unseen realm and compel them to be made manifest in my life do you believe that the bible says the word became flesh the word became means it was translated from a dimension and brought here what you call creation is only creation in this realm from a, a spiritual standpoint is simply transportation of realities from a realm and a dimension are we together now and to make it manifest here this is powerful ah everything that is missing in my life i don't need to fear the power of god is able to create it what does it mean to create to take raw materials from the realm of the spirit and literally materialize it to be made manifest here and now and you see it's a mystery because our finite minds and thinking cannot stretch that far so the bible simply says just like you do not know how bones are formed in the womb of her who is with child nor the way of the wind it says that's how you do not know the work of god when it has to do with manifesting the power of god to create possibilities in your life there will be gaps in your understanding there is a limit to which you can understand but it's just for you to believe that god is able to make her Happen today something in your life that is not there in the name of Jesus Christ when Abraham was about to kill Isaac 
as an act of his obedience unto god the bible records that when he told him he said stop for now i know that you fear me and i swear that in blessing i will bless you in multiplying i will multiply you and so on and so forth he said now you turn and you will see a a lamb a ram that had been caught together where did that suddenly come from i hope you know how high he had to climb to go and kill isaac that is what the power of god can do so do not be surprised that you will go back home and see an email you did not remember applying for you see if you do not know listen if you do not know what the power of god can do you will credit everything to the devil oh i believe this i believe this i believe this in the name of jesus that what was not there and what needs to be made manifest many of you have seen things in your dreams god has shown you things for how long will they remain in the realm of the spirit there is a power component that must bring it down you've seen the job there you've seen the lifting there you've seen the child there you've seen the increase there but it takes power to transport it believe what i'm telling you from the unseen realm to be made manifest the assignment of power is that it stops that reality from just being a dream and being a vision the word became flesh and it was made manifest and we beheld we beheld we beheld hallelujah power the agency for creation the agency for manifestation and so they tell you your kidneys are failing or they tell now watch this watch this let me tell you how the devil has played with the minds of believers please look at me and i mean no offense i just want you to learn something watch my hand as normal as my hands are if my hand suddenly begins to swell swell and become so big nobody will ask where the extra flesh came from that is supposed to be a wonder itself what part of my body was reduced to have added this my weight i'm losing weight yet that very part of the hand is growing and that does not look like a miracle for many people a wonder but if it shrinks back we now say where did it go to you see what happens to our mind are you understanding my thinking now that someone you are losing weight it's not like a part of your body reduced something began to grow in a rate that your body does not use it should not grow at that rate within two three months there is a mighty growth nobody will ask where did it come from there has to be a power that is not natural that sponsored that growth because your body does not grow at that rate so you can see that the growth rate of that demonic thing whatever it is is inconsistent with god's programming on how your body should naturally grow that already tell you tells you that there is an ability that is not normal that is sponsoring that growth do you believe this so why then should you doubt where at the instance of prayer somebody will look and say i do not find it and you say oh, are you sure <laughs> are you sure are you sure are you sure creator of the universe what can you do what can you do jesus just listen to what you are saying sing that part again creator of the universe what can you do what can you do jesus beautiful song creator what can't you do if the devil can cause something you were not born with to just appear in your body sometimes without a medical explanation can the creator of your life come back in response and take away that thing from your body is it not in your bible that every tree that my father ah, do we not study our bibles every tree this is not a prophet talking every tree that has not been planted by my father that god himself can uproot and in the name of jesus he is uprooting everything that our father did not plant uprooting everything that our father did not plant 
Hallelujah. Please sit down. Sometimes people ask me and say, Apostle, how do miracles happen? How, how can someone just be sitting on a wheelchair and in a moment, the person stands up and starts walking? What happened to the bones? My question is, how does a healthy person suddenly become bound? Reverse the process in your mind. How does somebody whose bones are alive and adult, all of a sudden wakes up one morning and the hand refuses to function? Don't, doesn't that tell you that a stranger, that while men slept, Jesus tried to explain, someone came and planted something. I'm saying it again. Any stranger that came to the soil of your life to plant anything that was not of God, my God will uproot it. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. The power of God, his agency for creation, his agency for manifestation, his agency for creation, his agency for manifestation. Hmm. Number two, let's hurry up. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What is the power of God? Are you ready now? His agency for correction. Hmm. the power of god is his agency for correction that means when there is anything that should not be the factor that is released to correct that anomaly is called the power of god please just listen carefully his agency for correction matthew chapter 8 from verse 1 to 3 matthew chapter 8 please watch this the bible says and when he was come down from the mountain the he being jesus great multitudes followed him verse 2 the bible says and behold there came a leper and worshiped him and the leper said unto him if thou will thou canst make me clean and jesus says to him he put forth his hand and touched him and said i will be thou clean and immediately his leprosy was cleansed do you know what it means to correct to correct means to take away the default and to take away the constraining factor so that you restore whatever it is to its original state so to understand correction you need to look at a pencil and a cleaner please look up assuming i'm writing one to ten and I write one, two, three, four, and five should be the sequence. And for whatever reason, I made a mistake and I wrote seven. Are we together? I have destroyed that progression. Am I right on that? The assignment of the cleaner is to wipe away that so that I can now make, so that when you are reading it, you will never know that anything went wrong like that. Let me prophesy to someone everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen someone say correction for instance please sit down for instance that you came from a family where it's been purported that nobody rises because of some demonic fraternities and covenants that were entered that you were not there now you were not there your opinion was not sought are we together but now that you are there the power of God can reach down and begin to correct things correct things take away the constraining factor Luke chapter 13 from verse 10. Luke chapter 13. His agency for correction. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. How long? 18 years. I told you time does not change anything. Time only reveals. It takes an encounter with power for anything to change. 
a number of us here are science-based and when you study the works of sir isaac newton even his works on mechanics he, there there are certain laws that were put there for instance his his first law of mechanics says that a body will remain in a state of rest are we together or uniform motion except compelled by an external force to act otherwise in other words if, if you leave this here it will remain here forever until something greater than the force keeping it pushes it am i right on that so if your destiny is this object it will remain there provided the cause provided the satanic intrusion seems to be gaining over you but when a power greater than what is keeping you arrives ah is turning things around that's that's someone's testimony right now Can you sing it one more time? That's what is happening to you right now. In the name of Jesus correction who seen that this man was born blind why is it that nobody rises in this family and the anointing comes and says it no longer matters a force greater than what is keeping you has arrived a force greater than the curse a force greater than the witchcraft a force greater than every limitation has arrived hallelujah sometimes when I can squeeze a little time, I just sit in the living room and I'm watching Nat Joe Wild, the National Geographic channel. And sometimes I watch with shock and wonder as animals act out the truth of scripture. So I find out that one animal can suffer, go through the, the rigor and the labor of patiently waiting, say for antelopes or some animals in their groups. And then when it traps one, the lion, or the hyena or any animal that is more powerful than that it would turn the animal that caught that one to a, a prey now and just comes to bully it away and i said this is it for as long as the greater does not come satan looks powerful for as long as the greater does not come delay looks powerful curses look powerful the cancer looks powerful i hope you know that they all have names a name is essentially a means of identification and i hope you know that every time you give something a name you have also created a basis to personify it you call it hiv you call it cancer you call it retrogression you can give it all kinds of names including sympathetic ones like rise and fall whatever you call it the most important thing is once you have identified it you have given it a, a, a sense you have personified it and you have put it in a position where the name of jesus christ that all the power that i'm talking about has been invested in that name now you will understand what jesus meant when he said all power all authority exousia in heaven and on earth has been given to me he says go therefore that means no matter what you meet be aware that what is in you is greater than what is around hallelujah apostle you are talking like this because you don't know the kind of background that i'm coming from do you know the one i'm coming from we all came from somewhere once you are in africa there is somewhere it's not look when you are lamenting about your background don't cry to an african because you are you are, you are talking to the wrong person we all come from i assure you am i right on that but you see the the same power the bible says the body of jesus is lying down right there my goodness and that power right from hades it picked that body back to this realm if that same spirit that raised christ from the dead that that same spirit dwells in your mortal body that means the spirit is a lifter it doesn't keep people down when he finds anything and anyone that is down it must lift you someone is rising
in the name of Jesus someone is rising I prophesy to you you are rising you are rising and the world will see your business is rising the power that raised Christ from the dead greater than any curse greater than any enchantment greater than every demonic orchestration in the name of Jesus Christ listen please don't just get entertained with what I'm saying what I'm telling you is truth from Scripture after two days he will revive us and on the third day he will raise us up even if your situation is as heavy as the axe head it can still float back up again same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me sing it one time if you know the song same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me oh hallelujah your love that rescued the earth lives in me apostle the doctor told me that somewhere blood is following the wrong channel in my body excellent welcome to a conference where the power of god comes to correct 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 correct, correct. that everything that has not been planted by my father following the wrong channel it must be corrected in one minute open your mouth and declare correct my life correct my business by your power someone is declaring in the name of jesus correct supernaturally correct in the name of jesus to the glory of the father let there be a supernatural correction correct my organs correct my life correct my finances oh god by your power hallelujah hallelujah please be seated is god speaking to someone carry this revelation and you will not be scared of anomalies the moment you see things that are not right you are not scared the person who has the cleaner and the person who has the pencil who is greater the person who has the pencil can write everything that's why sometimes you allow children to write nonsense on important documents provided they are using a pencil they can go ahead and explore their creativity because in one moment you can wipe it away and it does not look like anything was written so sometimes when you see god majestically coming into your life you are like lord satan has been writing for too long it doesn't matter once he arrives how long did it take the power of sin to trap people but in one moment the blood of jesus came and with one single sweep it got it out of the way say amen what is the power of god number three is god helping someone yeah. i like this third description the power of god is his agency for enforcing compliance the power of god ah, yeah, 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 is his agency for enforcing compliance compliance as i just said compliance i just saw like fire this is what i just saw i just saw like fire this is what you see when god starts showing me things like that it's not because that's when he started working but he's only showing it because he's doing something in the life of someone hallelujah his agency write this down for enforcing compliance follow carefully i'm going to give you three scriptures and i want us to study them carefully his agency for enforcing please underline enforcing compliance 
Luke chapter 4, please, from verse 31. Watch this. Hmm. Compliance immediately suggests that there is a possibility for rebellion. Am I right on that? When you pass laws, you put systems, even within society, when the Senate or the House or whatever, when they finally pass a law, there are usually systems through agencies that are put together that becomes the eyes of the law am i right on that and their assignment is to insist that there must be compliance and came down to capernaum we're reading luke 4 31 uh-huh a city of galilee and taught them on the sabbath day jesus now the bible says and they were astonished at his doctrine for his word was with power and the bible says and in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice he was disrupting service saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou jesus of nazareth art thou come to destroy us i know thee who thou art the holy one of god we're reading to 37 and jesus rebuked them saying i love this hold thy peace and come out of him and when the devil had thrown him in the midst he came out of him and hurt him not say compliance the Bible says, and they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. Other versions say, and they obey him. And the Bible says, the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. Let me tell you the truth. The zenith of power and authority is when you speak and there is obedience. Is one thing to speak Genesis chapter 1 from verse 2 and 4 Jesus God himself gives us his model of power the Bible says and God said verse 3 there was darkness and chaos and all of that God said let there be light and your Bible says there was am I right on that and the Bible says God saw the light that it was good and it divided the light from darkness so when you make decrees and then there is rebellion to your decree it means your power is questionable am i right on that yeah. obedience to instructions obedience to decrees is how you know that power is available within a place am i right on that yes and my bible says and thou shalt decree a thing is it in your bible and it shall be established unto you in fact it says where the word of a king is he says there is power what kind of power power that compels compliance the bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that satan is very stubborn just because scripture says it does not mean he will obey not without force it is written I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders in Israel. Satan does not care. Even to Jesus, he came and stubbornly came and was wasting his time. And Jesus said, get thee, Satan. He came to Peter and tried to manipulate Peter. And Jesus looked at him and said, get behind me, Satan. Is that true? Compliance. There are many believers who say things and it looks like devils and demons and situations and circumstances just tell us and say by what power for instance the sons of Sceva what they said was right but the power that enforces compliance was not there we adjure you by Jesus and he said Jesus I know Paul I know I always add my name Joshua Selman I know he says but who are thou From today you will speak and you will see it come to pass in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus that you can look at situations and circumstances and say peace be still was that not what Jesus said why are you so fearful oh you of little faith he said the Bible says he got up wiped sleep from his eyes and spoke to the wind and to the waves and said shalom be still the bible says there was an instant calm 
and the disciples marveled and said what manner of man is this that even the wind and the waves obey him obey him bringing everything to the obedience of christ do you believe what i'm telling you jesus sends the disciples two by two the bible records and they went and returned back rejoicing you know what their joy was they said we are shocked this thing that used to happen to you has started happening to us too that even the devils were subject to us in thy name and jesus laughed and said that that don't rejoice over that but rejoice that your names are written in the book of life but then that they rejoice there is nothing as powerful as the realm of the spirit being obedient to your word it enforces the fact that you are a king indeed and let me tell you when there is a track record of your speakings coming to pass in your life and that of others that is value that men will never even leave you alone they will pursue you to the cave they will pursue you to the mountains because they have learned that the word of god like samuel is upon your mouth and for samuel the bible says none of his word fell to the ground say power, power. Hmm. the centurion comes to jesus the equivalent of a captain in the army and he says please come my son is sick unto death and would you help me and he said no you are a, a noble man in the army i will respect you and come to your house and the centurion gives us a very strong lesson that jesus himself acknowledged the centurion said you do not need to come under my roof for i am a man under authority in other words when it comes to do with power and authority i understand i am under the authority of the government of rome and on account of that authority i say unto one go and he goeth i say to one come and he cometh do this and he does and i know that you are not alone you also came under the authority of heaven so speak the word only and jesus said i've not found this faith in other words who taught you this where did you learn this no not in israel he said Ah, the believer has such a phenomenal advantage ladies and gentlemen that i can stand from this pulpit and speak without going there the actual location because where the word of a king is there is power the president of this nation or any noble leader across the globe they can sit down and issue a statement sometimes you they don't even have to speak it is in writing provided they append their signature there it becomes law There are many things we have been telling situations and circumstances but they have not been able to come to a point of obedience because we have not realized that the power of god is and has the assignment of enforcing compliance satan get lost and he says who are you talking about me you know how old i've been here and then you say it's true it's true so what do we do about this now if you use your own authority as a believer you become cheated immediately but remember the bible says blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hallelujah so do not wonder when you see demons and infirmities and situations obey that you can look at someone with no job and say in the name of jesus i open the two lift gates of lagos that that which belongs to you must find you and the person returns with a testimony it is called compliance i hope you know that creation has an ear my bible says let everything that hath an ear listen he that hath an ear let him hear and the prophet will speak and say o f hear ye the word of the lord you just see it as a an extended mass full of dust but in the realm of the spirit everything can hear it is one quality animate and inanimate things have biology and science will teach us from a scientific standpoint that they are living and non-living things and we respect them we'll keep it so but i can tell you from a spiritual standpoint there is no such thing as non-living the concept of non-living only exists within the frame of science everything can hear the word of the lord everything in fact everything can hear it just depends on who is speaking That means your situation as it's not only you that came to the church your situation is also listening to this sermon you are not the only one who is listening remember when the prophet was talking with the woman the jar of oil was hearing too 
i have nothing except and i'm sure the oil was saying but i've been here and the prophet said you think you are the only one i'm talking to you go and borrow vessels borrow not a few and watch another audience in your house that you're not even aware of the oil began to multiply everything can hear everything can hear barrenness can hear everything can hear retrogression can hear everything and when the lord speaks even by his power there must be compliance in the name of jesus christ number four very quickly has god helped someone already what is the power of god finally the power of god is his agency for bringing salvation his agency for bringing salvation i said i was going to give us three scriptures for enforcing compliance let me just give us the two remaining we will not read it but i'll just give it to us please write for reference matthew 8 24 to 27 matthew 8 24 to 27 and then psalm 66 verse 3 i'll take it again matthew 8 24 to 27 and psalm 66 and verse 3 now number four his agency for bringing salvation say salvation salvation here is not just limited to the new birth experience salvation is deliverance in its entirety are we together it comes from the greek word soteria it captures within it healing deliverance lifting breakthrough anything that sustains the ability of cutting to cut you away from that which stands as a resistance is called salvation acts chapter 4 and verse 33 let me request that we read together when we have it projected acts 4 33 ready one to read it says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection uh-huh and great grace one more time and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all thank you god bless you please be seated the bible says with great power not with great stories with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection that means it took more than an intellectual discussion to prove the validity of his resurrection it was with great power great power great power romans 1 and verse 16 here's what it says romans 1 and verse 16 i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ he says for it is the power not just that it has the power it is the power of god it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the jew first and to the greek what is the power of god the agency for bringing salvation salvation for the lost salvation for the downtrodden i sat quietly as i listened to our precious people testifying freedom liberty from depression and as they mentioned all those cases you know quite frankly i wasn't really focusing on all the story i just wanted to know what and what i would deal with from the stories they were saying <laughs> so i wanted to hear okay i hear depression i hear this i hear that because they must bow today today in the name of jesus christ salvation what does it mean to be saved to be rescued from danger what does it mean to be saved to be taken to a place of safety where you are far within the grip of danger and evil that is what salvation means first it starts with the lost but it does not just end with the lost even believers who are saved the bible says the name of the lord is a strong tower am i right on that it says the righteous so they are already righteous but they can run to it and they are saved because there is still another kind of disaster the devil want to bring even upon the righteous in fact the bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord by this power delivered him from them all from them all many are the afflictions of the righteous i've often said that it is not unusual for believers to have challenges it is defeat that is unusual it is not unusual for believers to have challenges many are the afflictions of the righteous but victory 
is what the word of god guarantees and the power of god is the principal sponsor for the believer's victory hallelujah the great power of god acts when you read acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to 34 just write for reference excuse me Acts 16 25 to 34 just write for reference the Bible talks about Paul and Silas that at midnight they prayed and they sang praises unto God loud enough for the prisoners to hear them then when you read on the Bible says suddenly there was an earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking and the Bible says immediately all doors open and everyone's band was loose from his hand you read down to 34 and you see that as a result of that mighty manifestation the jailer and his family came to the saving knowledge of jesus am i right on that the jailer took a sword and wanted to kill himself and paul said, peter said no 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 do not harm yourself paul my, my apologies do not harm yourself we are all here and he said wow what then do i need to do to be saved and that gave room for the gospel i teach our school of ministry students and one of the things when we discuss evangelism one of the strategies for evangelism is evangelism by power there is a dimension of evangelism that happens on account of the supernatural manifestation of god's power i've had the honor and the privilege to preach this gospel across region and nations by the grace of god and i have seen many run to jesus when they see because according to act to john chapter 4 and verse 48 john 4 48 it says except ye see signs and wonders ye will not believe except ye see signs and wonders i read stories of men and women many who have joined the cloud of witnesses like tl osborne rw shanbach Reinhard Bonke of blessed memory and these great men who serve the purposes of God with all their hearts they took more than a message to the nations it took the the coordinated effort of the message and the power one more time the message and the power the message and the power let me show you one last scripture to buttress on this point and we begin to pray Acts chapter 8 beginning from verse 5 acts chapter 8 and verse 5 i love the bible the bible says then philip went down to the city of samaria and preached christ unto them what did he preach christ unto them verse 6 the bible says and the people with one accord they gave heed to those things which philip speak why did he get that attention from them hearing and seeing the miracles which he did you may have heard me say it and i'll repeat it again that the christian experience was never supposed to be heard alone don't just keep saying god is good there has to be an experience that backs that statement you can taste and see not just hear and assume or hear and doubt you can taste and see the goodness of the lord has an experience to it for unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many that were taken with palsies and that were lame were healed as a result verse 8 there was great joy great joy among the the foundations of sapphire there was great joy at the king's court what was the basis of the joy that as a result of this conference look what god has done look at the mighty manifestations open doors reconciliations this is the kingdom when jesus sent the disciples in matthew chapter 10 and verse 1 and then we'll go to verse 7 let's look at matthew 10 verse 1 and verse 7 just to add one more scripture and when he had called them unto him his 12 disciples the bible says he gave them power am i right on that he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases verse 7 he says as ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand but don't stop there verse 8 validate your speakings by healing the sick cleansing the lepers raising the dead casting out devils freely ye have received freely give this is the gospel that you say 
Jesus is able to do this, then by the investment of his power upon your life, there becomes a performance and a manifestation. You know, let me tell you the truth. Growing up, I wondered why people seem to be cold towards the gospel. I watched sincere preachers preach and they would sweat and shout sincerely so. And at the end of it, with such a large crowd, after almost begging, you see one person just stroll out as though he was just coming out to sympathize with the man of God. And he does not even recite the salvation prayer. And I said, come on, no, this cannot be God. Yet you can know by the spirit, not by condemnation, that there are many sinners in that meeting. You look left, you look right, they are all there. And yet with the altar call, none of them comes out. And I said, I think the missing key, I researched and I found out by scripture and experience that for many, it was because there was no demonstration. No demonstration. No demonstration. I have seen and sometimes I get full of tears as I make the altar call and you see all kinds of people including the most like unlikely people run to Jesus run to the cross in total genuine surrender you will know that their coming out was sincere genuine because by their personality they are not even the kind of people who embarrass themselves to come out like that but when the power of God is put on display it can swallow up the pride of any man and bring them before the cross if you believe that say amen, amen. and I strongly believe with all of my heart that even today will be no different that there are people whilst you are listening to me you know by the conviction of the spirit that it is time for the power of god to do its work in you bringing you to that saving knowledge yes for the bible says there is no other name given unto man by which we must be saved the name of jesus that's what god is presenting to us more than the miracles of healing and the rest the greatest gift god gives men is himself himself greater love hath no man than this than a man laid down his life for his friend am i right on that i just feel stirred in my heart to do the altar call before we pray that for the sake of someone in this place i know that yesterday we had the altar call but there is no taking chances when it has to do with the life of god listen ladies and gentlemen this is beyond a call to christianity this is beyond just a church activity jesus christ proposes his own life his own life you have trusted things of lesser value you have so wholeheartedly surrendered yourself to things of lesser value that had no track record of preserving you it is wisdom to give him a chance to manage your life for the bible says i know whom i have believed it says and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed he only keeps that which is committed unto him the lord jesus brought you here this afternoon to make a conscious decision for jesus now the beautiful thing about god is that it is within your power to reject him you can as an act of your own volition reject jesus that means you can sit down and say i have heard the word intelligently communicated but i choose as an act of my will to reject you jesus he will respect your choice except that you will only be scheduling seasons of pain and tragedy both in this life and in the life to come for the bible says what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul many have left and they left without making this noble decision this according to scripture is the wisest decision that any man can make in this side of god's kingdom and the holy spirit the lord of the harvest himself is giving you an opportunity i know you came to receive your prayer requests are in the basket and they'll be dealt with shortly but i'm presenting to you afresh jesus christ the one you rejected yesterday he peter while speaking on the day of pentecost said let it be known to you that this same jesus that you have been crucified has today been exalted as lord and christ the bible says when they heard him they were caught to the heart and they said men and brethren what shall we do peter replies and he says repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise he said for the promise is unto you and to your children your children's children as many as are far off even those that the lord will call 
the spirit of god is hovering around this place convicting people and that includes the person watching in your home the one watching probably by way of rebroadcast in your office across the globe jesus is calling you this is not a christian's call this is jesus calling i will count one to five like i did yesterday i don't know who needs to be bold to respond to the call of the spirit to say apostle i'm not going to be ashamed i will come and stand right here before the people of god i begin my counting now leave your seat and come and stand right here nothing to be ashamed of you are coming to jesus the lover of your soul one please stand for sake of space two is this the best we can do to encourage those coming there is only one name come there is only one name with power to say keep coming don't be ashamed power to say hallelujah come come no matter how far, make your way to the front. With power to say. With power to say. I rejoice over everyone who is standing here we used to sing a song in the seminary when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus will sing and shout the victory I appreciate every one of you for the courage to come and stand before Jesus the Bible declares that whoever is not ashamed of him before men, that he will not be ashamed of you even before his father. I salute you for the courage. You are standing here not before a man, not in front of a church. You are standing in front of the throne. Jesus himself, the king, the lover of your soul, seated on that throne. Now, you're going to be given a green card. The counselors will hand you over a card. And I will please request that after your prayer, you will take the time to fill the card legibly. This is so that they can follow up on you and just help you to stand as far as the knowledge of God is concerned. But I want to lead you to make this noble decision. I presume that some of you are rededicating your lives to Jesus. It doesn't matter if this is your first time or a rededication, you're most welcome. Please lift your right hand above your head as a sign of surrender. And I want you to say this after me. And when you say it, mean it from the depth of your heart. Mean it from the depth of your heart. You are not reciting a poem. This is unto Jesus himself. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. I have heard your word. I believe in you. That you are the son of God. I believe. That you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my life as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from today and forever i am a child of god washed by the blood of the lamb i go forward ever and backward never amen please keep those lovely hands up i'm praying for you now father thank you for this once the bible declares that no man cometh to the father except by him and it says blessed is everyone that the lord causes to approach him these have come by the leading of the spirit i declare by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven in the name of jesus 
and i declare that you are bona fide recipients of the life of god based on the authority of scripture i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life the appetite to rebel against god and his ways leaves your life now and any demon spirit that ties you down keeping you bound i declare you are released right now in the name of jesus christ i declare that you are a child of god a son and a daughter in the kingdom to the glory of the name of the lord you go forward ever and backward never in jesus mighty name i pray amen and amen god bless you so here's what i want you to do for me just one more instruction i'll please request that you follow our mother and the counselors will have a word with you and you quickly come to join us as we pray over the requests now let's celebrate them as they go thank you thank you thank you let's celebrate them as they go it's a new season for them I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. I lay me down and I slept. I wait for the Lord sustains me. But now, O oh Lord, are the shield for me. We're about to pray three things now that i'm going to do number one is we're going to pray and cry and say father my life is barren of genuine spiritual power let power from on high that empowers me to be a faithful witness bringing creation bringing correction compelling compliance and bringing salvation to my life and then through me to others you're going to cry desperately like blind Bartimaeus cried when that power comes upon your business it will do what it was sent to do when it comes upon your family to do what it was sent to do you're going to open your mouth and pray no distraction looking on to Jesus you're going to pray from the depth of your heart go ahead and pray power from on high lord release power upon my life upon my christian experience power that causes me to pray power that causes me to serve the purposes of god power that breaks every addiction power that breaks every infirmity someone pray in the name of jesus the son of the living god power that translates me from a failure to a victor in experience someone is praying power from on high power from on high in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all I have seen what the power of God can do not just in terms of miracles signs and wonders it takes power to move forward it says Moses tell the people that they go forward they were stuck the red sea before them egyptians behind them defeat was imminent but not when power came he said tell the people to go forward and with one blast of his nostrils he parted the red sea hither and thither and the bible says they walked on dry ground 
hallelujah now we're going to pray over the requests but i want to take a minute or two to minister to you so i want you to pray that which must live your life now not tomorrow that which must live your life now not later i'd like you to agree with god in prayer it lives finally is it that shame is it that reproach someone pray don't doubt don't doubt remember we discuss here extensively on how far god is able to go on account of his saints and that he desires that his power be revealed in the midst of his people this plague this infirmity you must live my life now hallelujah i remember i once prayed for a woman very interesting thing you know how a cancer patient who has gone through chemo you know how sometimes they lose their hair this is what was happening to the woman and she had never gone through chemo just like that wonderful beautiful woman began to lose beauty and color because of some demonic thing her hair literally started falling and they went to the hospital and they could not diagnose medically that there was anything wrong there is no limit to how far satan can go to cause pain to believers but the bible says for this purpose was the son of god made manifest that he may destroy the works of the evil one hallelujah let me pray for the sick now i want you to lay your hands where you are trusting god for a miracle you can stand for yourself you can stand for your loved ones and i want you to believe we're out of time but i'm going to do this very fast and i want to minister to you my god i sense such a strong anointing here just lay your hands wherever it is you are trusting god for a miracle Please don't allow the devil lie to you and say that's how they prayed for you that day. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Leave that day. Now you are in his presence. Lay your hands. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest or your head. You can stand in for your loved one, whether they are in the hospital, wherever they are. Something special, supernatural about your name, Jesus. Something happens when the Thank you Jesus he gave us power to pray for the sick to release people from all kinds of bondages and this is why he sent us even here and as I pray for you I want you to shout amen and I'm going to ask you to check yourself don't be ashamed don't be afraid you will marvel and wonder at what the power of God is able to do bringing you healing I'm seeing someone literally burning, like fire burning the person from feet to head. And it is a process of cleansing. It's a spiritual cleansing that is happening. At the end of that experience, you will find out that every infirmity that has plagued you is living right now. Living by the Spirit of the living God. Living by the Spirit of God. Now in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, the resurrected King, I decree and declare every spirit that is back of any infirmity I command you to give way now in the name of Jesus every spirit of infirmity I command you to give way now in the name of Jesus I command you to give way now in the name of Jesus I command you to give way now in the name of Jesus everyone sick in body i declare be healed now 
believe it be healed now migraine headache be healed now peptic ulcer be healed now there's someone god is healing you have frequent urination this can become an embarrassment sometimes you can go to ease yourself so many times and it's something that you it has embarrassed you again and again the lord is healing you right now the lord is showing me someone you have very severe pain around your joints not just your knee but your joints i don't know if it's something that is related to your 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 genotype or something but in the name of jesus christ the lord is bringing you healing now bringing you healing now bringing you healing now in the name of jesus i've seen this case before and i've prayed on it i don't know what program quite a number of times you are not a nursing mother yet you are lactating you are not a nursing mother yet you are lactating producing breast milk in the name of jesus i don't know what the medical condition is but i declare your healing now your healing now there's someone you have some kind of skin infection in fact your back it looks like eczema but it has refused to go this is what i'm seeing in my vision there's some skin infection irritation sometimes it pains you um it itches you very discomforting itch you will know you are healed because the itching stops now the itching stops now by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ there is a man here god is showing me a condition this is a condition that is common to men and this is something that if not dealt with sustains the ability to destroy even your marriage but i'm praying healing right now supernatural healing for you high blood pressure goes down now peptic ulcer goes down now if you have any loved one who is in the hospital in the name of jesus i declare cancer dies from their body cancer dies from their body cancer dies from their body healing for kidneys in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing a woman you keep taking in and it does not get up to four months there must be a miscarriage and this happens when you have a dream and you start bleeding and that's the end of it i cause that devil now in the name of jesus christ i'm still praying omnipotent father of mercy and grace in this place you went to take your bath and water entered your right ear and from that day till today you still feel as if your ear has not been released it's not like you are not hearing but you know how you feel when there's water there's someone like that with that condition the power of god is touching you right now the power of god is touching you right now you are not able to bend over backwards properly because there is excruciating pain just at your back right here in the name of jesus i decree and declare that after this prayer life and healing comes for you life and healing comes for you now the lord is showing me someone there, there's somebody here there is a particular food you cannot eat the moment you eat that food is like rashes breaks out of your body i don't know what food that is now you are not able to eat the moment you eat it there is a reaction in the name of jesus christ the power of god is touching you right where you are right where you are you have severe pain heart your heart you are having a serious problem if you lie down on this side and you wake up it's as though blood is not pumping properly in jesus name that manifestation of the spirit of death i cause it from your life now whether i mention your case or not in the name of jesus the resurrected king be healed be healed be healed right now be healed by the power of the holy ghost 
be healed now. The Lord is showing me someone, ah, I need to pray for you. Because with what I'm seeing, your entire respiratory system is under attack. It looks like cough or catar, but there is a build up of a lot of things from what I'm seeing. This is affecting you because sometimes when you lie down, you have to use your mouth to breathe. You can't use your nose to breathe. This thing can, you wake up in the night choking, the person I'm talking about. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that plague of death leaves you now. That plague of death leaves you now. That plague of death leaves you now. In the name of Jesus. Even though I'm praying for the sick for now, but the Lord is showing me someone's case, so I will announce it. There is a serious problem you have in your place of work. It looks like a group of people just came and ganged up against you for things that you cannot remember doing. And I need to pray for you because I'm seeing a board sitting on your issue and they are signing a letter that you should be relieved. This is what I'm seeing. But in the name of Jesus, God reveals to redeem. I don't know, I don't know who has that situation, but we call upon the God of heaven let mercy prevail over judgment let mercy prevail over judgment in the name of jesus let mercy prevail over judgment by the power of the holy ghost now here's what i want you to do i'm going to ask you to check yourself we're still going to do some more prayer but i want you to check yourself the moment you find out that you were part of the case that i mentioned or you can do something now you couldn't do let's just have one or two testimonies and then i'll be ready to minister deliverance and to pray over the sick i want you to check yourself do what you couldn't do the moment you find out that the power of god has touched you don't be ashamed don't be afraid make your way to the front as we celebrate you right now check yourself do what you couldn't do hold on i'm seeing someone um this is a periodic occurrence and you were told that it happens when it is rainy season you start having boils at specific parts of your body this is what i'm seeing your legs and sometimes you know your armpits and the rest are, this is what god is showing me certain boils start coming out and they say that it's associated with rainy season in the name of jesus i don't know who that person is but i want you to know you are healed now the power of god is touching you right now to the glory of the name of the lord now please check yourself very quickly and make your way to the front right now but i want to speak to someone whose name who is messy messy i'm hearing the name messy is there someone with the name messy i just want to pray over you Mercy, do we have someone with that name? Mercy, you discuss your problem with somebody, and when you discuss your problem with somebody, you agree that God will visit you in this conference. And I want you to know that God is a prayer answering God. You believe in the power of god i'm going to pray for you mercy there is someone god is showing me you are a sickler i'm a sickler you are wearing black you are a woman black with red i'm seeing black with red is there you are not a young person or like a is there someone like that My sister, I hope you are not embarrassed. Please don't be embarrassed. This is a family of faith. It's not, it's just a description, not this God, ba. Father, I'm praying right now. Harasuberi Susieta Kata. Mercy. Let me start with mercy. God brought you out here this is incredible i'm laying hands on people but the person the power of god is falling on is in the crowd please when you find that person i want you to bring that person for me there is a mighty impartation that is happening to someone i'm praying for people here but the person that the power of god is falling on is somewhere in the crowd and when that happens please i want that particular i know that there might be a number of people 
but i want to pray for that particular person it's like a tsunami a rain of god's anointing is going to rest upon you in the name of jesus please when that happens let me have that person okay our, you brought our children too okay no problem since they are here we're standing for them mercy in the name of jesus i'm praying for you that every planting that is not of god plaguing your life in the name of jesus the son of the living god let it give way now everything associated with witchcraft my sister please look at me tap this woman for me the lord is saying i should tell you remember ye not the former things nor consider the things of old he said for behold i do a new thing i do a new thing in the name of jesus christ please bring them here i declare the power of god in the name of jesus where is the person there is a gentleman here and also a lady you are trusting god for scholarship full scholarship this is what i'm seeing i, I presume that many people are praying but this person this is a full scholarship to go and study this is what i'm seeing this is something you are aware of it's not something you are praying for now it's been a project because it is impossible with with what is around you no just lift your hands who is that person ah our mommy is come okay oh you are standing for someone man. oh okay oh i see praise god okay we're going to pray you'll be surprised you will return back with testimonies in the name of jesus mercy i stretch my hands over you your home let there be a miracle right now i release you from every orchestration of witchcraft in jesus name now let me pray for my god bless you let me pray for my people with the the um genotype the, for this purpose was the son of god made manifest that he may destroy i've i've had the honor and the privilege of praying for people especially our precious ones when they have all kinds of crises and it's not a nice sight i'm telling you for some of them is literally like they are standing between life and death i don't know why the holy ghost brought this too but you see the thing with god is when he speaks to one he speaks to all he's the one who knows the pain and the burden that people came here with hallelujah thank you jesus father i stretch my hands upon our precious people right now i decree and declare that everything that is not the planting of god in your body right now let it go right now i place an anointing upon all of you and i declare let it go we declare a change of genotype we declare a change of genotype we declare a change of genotype change help her please we declare a change of genotype by the power of the holy ghost and in the name of jesus every devil every spirit connected to bloodline and ancestry that wants to trap you including our little ones here at this conference we declare that you are released now in the mighty name of jesus by the power of prophecy i declare that this crisis comes to an end in your life in the name of jesus christ and for the ones trusting god for scholarship like god revealed to me i declare prophetically you may not see the wind you may not see rain but may my god raise help us for you may my god raise help us for you May my God raise help us for you. May my God raise help us for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have you found that person under the anointing? I want to speak. Who is that person? This lady. Where are you from, my dear? Huh? I'm going to pray for you. Father, there is a reason why you brought this, your daughter. I decree and declare that everything that has to do with witchcraft connected to Benin, 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 
Paraso ke la subrendi ke balasu kiatapas. Krada bolasu prende ke variato skeba. I'm seeing a wind blowing right now. The power of God is moving across. Is is like a deliverance that is happening. I'm seeing the power of God moving. Now let's not litter the place, but please, I want you to bring for me the people under the anointing right now. I stretch my hands. Everyone who has been under the yoke of witchcraft and every kind of satanic manipulation, in the name of Jesus, let that fire parokatoske diata. Let it rest upon you now and bring you deliverance. Let it rest upon you now and bring you deliverance. Let it rest upon you now and bring you deliverance. Let it rest upon you now and bring you deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is showing me the feet of people tied. I'm seeing it tied so that you cannot move. That means you are stagnated and there is no progress. I don't know who that is, but in the name of Jesus, please bring them out if you can. I decree and declare. At the count of three, may I request that you shout Jesus, that name that is above every other name. Are you ready now? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Jesus. Out of their life now. Release their destinies 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 now. Release your destinies now in the name of Jesus. For the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. It says, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I declare be released now. 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 Be released now hear me every power of witchcraft sitting on any destiny here money apakatos ketebekata in the name of jesus may that fire fall now may that fire fall now may that fire fall now every altar that has spoken against the purposes of god in your life i command that it gives way now in the mighty and marvelous name of jesus christ Let them go now. Release their destinies now. For the Bible says, He who the Son sets free, it says, is free indeed. Is free indeed. Is free indeed. Free indeed. Free indeed. Hear me. There are people here under the sound of my voice. You keep seeing things, but your hand never reaches them. Just when you are about to grab them, something comes. I decree and declare, whatever stops you from receiving, I stand upon the grace that backs this commission. And I declare, be released right now. Be released right now. Be released right now. Be released right now. Released right now. By fire, be released right now. Be released right now. Be released right now. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to pray and break people free from all kinds of addictions. All kinds of addictions. Addictions that have tied people down, tied their destinies down. You want to serve the Lord, but here comes these addictions. I'm praying right now that anyone under the sound of my voice and following who has been a victim of any kind of addiction at the count of three, may that fire come upon you and break that appetite. One, two, three, break, 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 addictions, break, addictions, break. Addictions break. Addictions break in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
ladies and gentlemen please hear me hear me the lord is bringing liberty to these people the bible says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of jacob shall possess their possession for all of you who are in front here i declare by the blood of the lamb be free right now be free right now be free right now be free right now by the blood of the lamb every legal case that satan has over you we plead the blood be free right now be free right now be free right now in the name of jesus hallelujah praise the name of the lord can i pray for those trusting god for jobs you don't have to come out but i want you please believe in miracles god is not a herbalist but there is a name that is above every other name let me pray right now anyone here trusting god for the miracle of a job you don't have to come out right where you are in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare between now and the next three months may my god surprise you 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 in the name of jesus and if you are standing here for any of your children i declare shame is terminated permanently hallelujah the Lord is showing me is asking me to pray there is a family where marriages never work the people must return back to their parents homes I don't know where that family is but in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that the spirit responsible for this demonic thing it is against the will of God let it be broken now broken now broken now hallelujah now i want to say something don't be embarrassed is is that the lord is asking me to say it don't feel bad i am not condemning but there are two ladies here you don't have to come out you are living in a house with a man that is not your husband you are not married to i don't mean to condemn you after this service go and pack out of that place get out of that place be a responsible lady if you want to see the hand of god there are things you must do i'm saying it because god has asked me to say it. go and get out of that place in the name of jesus christ and trust the lord to help you and show you mercy because you would destroy your destiny and i assure you it is pain being programmed in your life hallelujah 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 the lord is saying rebuke the pattern of death rebuke the pattern of death reduce the pattern of death this is what i'm saying hear me it's like every specific time period you hear that someone has died every time period i don't know who the devil has programmed to be next but in the name of jesus for you and for your family oh death where is your sting and oh grave where is your victory i declare you and your loved ones are delivered from death you and your loved ones are delivered from death you and your loved ones are delivered from death you and your loved ones are delivered from death hallelujah listen i don't know what may have happened around your life and i sympathize with you but please hear me you have a right to stand and insist i shall not die please say it one more time say i shall not die but leave and declare the works of the Lord let the devil hear you I shall not die but leave and declare the works of the Lord hallelujah hallelujah 
you may return back to your seat rejoicing we are still praying two more prayers i'm not sure we may have time to take testimonies my apologies if that does not happen you can always testify but hear me please hear me listen listen the number one reason why people rise in life is the favor of god the number one reason why people fail in life is the bankruptcy of favor you see the proof of the favor of God upon the life of an individual is not naira and cobble it's not pounds and dollars that is the proof of wisdom that is the proof of value the real proof of favor watch this the real proof of favor upon the life of an individual if you care to know is loyalty to the hearts of men that the hearts of men become loyal you see if you are given an opportunity to choose between money and men choose men a thousand times before you choose money money only has its value because of men there are many of us here you are in the midst of several helpers but the mantle of favor that will compel them to remember you is not there so you see i know this i know this one and they keep lifting distant relatives and people they do not know and yet you are in the midst of plenty do you know why because people do not just help they are made to help hallelujah let me show you a scripture and then we'll pray job 42 and verse 10 once upon a time in the life of this man the bible called him the wealthiest man in the east had wonderful children and tragedy broke and in one day he lost everything that mattered to him plus that he now had a terrible incurable infirmity that ate him up reduced him to become a shadow of himself job was so frustrated several people came from across the regions to sympathize with him his family left him and even the wife that he had the last person standing one time she said job i'm tired cause god and die it's easy to think she was a wicked woman until you know what it means to stand behind a man under a prolonged period of pain like that but something happened in job 42 and verse 10 i want you to see it and please do not forget this scripture the bible says and the lord turned the captivity of job when he prayed for his friends also the lord gave job who gave job the who gave job the lord. the lord gave job twice as much as he had before but verse 11 tells us how it happened he says then came there unto him all his brethren that means they were always there when he was suffering but none of them came that man sat alone with his wife he had this many brethren and yet none of them would attend to him the bible says and his sisters and all they that were that had been of his acquaintance before the bible says and they eat they did eat bread with him in his house so they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the lord had brought upon him i want you to read the last line if you're a christian one to read every man okay stop there read from every man the first five words that you see ready one to read every man also gave him one more time every man also gave him. one more time every man also gave him. so every man is a giver including the one who has refused to give to you the bible says under a certain condition every man this was a man who was crying and praying you would think he had no family imagine that person sitting somewhere in the island here you would pass him and say oh dear everybody you see roaming around the street has a family somewhere and god will always leave himself a witness but it is the favor that is on your life that will compel men this man is crying languishing in pain and all of those every men left him but when god was ready to give supernaturally they came they ate bread with him they identified with him and the bible says every man 
gave him every man including your uncle the one you think is stingy every man including the ceo don't just blame people and say they will not give me your prayer is lord the favor that will compel men i'm saying this because this is what i want to pray over you every man gave him a piece of money and every man gave him an earring of gold yet verse 10 will tell us it was god that gave him so god's system is always men god gave job twice but how did that twice manifest every man so when god wants to give you ah, rest roundabout he plants that rest in the hearts of men someone calls you from us and say you've been on my mind in the last three days you say no i'm not surprised i was in a conference the last three days do you believe what i'm telling you there are men in this season who will step into prepared blessings this is listen this is not just some carnal marketing of materialism the purpose for all of these things is so that we can have the time the liberty and the comfort to serve his purposes you will never be able to serve the purposes of the kingdom in poverty in pain satan uses the strategy of material distraction to make you to not be focused on that which is eternal so the way God cures that destruction is to make for abundant supplies. According to 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8, it says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, so that ye having sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Not in the absence of sufficiency. You're not going to be faithful in prayer, church meeting, when you have five children with no school fees, there are bills there. You are fighting to ensure you are not being called an irresponsible father or mother. Where will you have the time to lead prayers? It distraction, financial distraction, and all kinds of things. These have been effective tools that Satan has used to derail people's passion towards God. He said, tell my people that they may go, Pharaoh, let my people go, that they may go and serve me they couldn't serve him effectively in egypt when they were under that taskmasters making straw and all of that but when they were left released they now could go and serve him can i pray for favor over someone mm. father in the name of jesus you are the one who gave gifts to men you are the one who shows men favor you are the one who connects men to the hearts of kings in the name of jesus here at this conference standing in partnership with the grace upon this house and upon this commission i decree and declare for everyone who has been bankrupt of the favor of god begin to walk in the favor of god from today begin to walk in unusual favor extraordinary favor may god raise men for your sake raise men for your company raise men for your business in the name of jesus christ hallelujah when favor rests upon your life it can make for the book of remembrance you see the bible tells us that the works of men are being recorded in a book do you believe that and if your works have been recorded it is archived for a time of honor when god will open and bless you in the similitude of what happened to mordecai mordecai saved the life of king ahasuerus it was archived but he was not rewarded then the bible says and that night could not ahasuerus sleep and he said bring me the chronicles when they opened the book he found where mordecai saved his life like you helped somebody who would have died like you are a lawyer who advocated for someone who now has an estate and yet there is no reward i'm praying for you whoever has forgotten you i call upon the god of my covenant that in this season may you be remembered for good may you be remembered for good may you be remembered for good in the name of jesus christ hallelujah can we pray in the spirit as we pray over the request Please bring the request here. Can you help me, sir? Someone is praying. These Egyptians that I see today, I see them no more forever. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. 
this is the scriptural basis for what we're doing philippians 4 and verse 6 let's read together one to read be anxious the word careful there is anxious be careful for nothing it says here but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god you don't assume that because he's all-knowing after all he knows it is the responsibility dimension of your work with god the bible says let your request be made known whenever i pray for requests i pray because number one the bible says so number two i pray because there is truly a covenant of answered prayer hallelujah and for those of you who care you may have heard my story when i had the honor and the privilege of lying and praying alone in the prayer room of our father and the lord baba deboe my prayer unto god when i was there was not give me tea give me grace i said lord whatever you have placed upon the head of our father that he will make decrees and say there is someone here may doors be open and doors open i said lord may that same grace and god had my prayer mantles have a location they don't just come from nowhere the bible says and without every contradiction the lesser is blessed of the greater you have a track record of keeping your word you're not about to Please just stretch your hands towards me you don't have to kneel i will do the kneeling and we are going to pray i want you to believe this i have seen phenomenal answers to prayers impossible situations you see no one is reading this you wrote it by yourself is the most accurate expression of your desires and the bible says unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come i am bowing before the god of heaven and as you begin to pray i like you to agree that the same hands that wrote this is the same hand that will receive the answer go ahead and begin to pray everyone pray in the name of jesus christ as i pray i want you to shout a believing amen in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare over every request here presented before the lord that these egyptians you see today May you see them no more forever. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Every financial issue here represented, I call upon the God of heaven, Ebenezer, even the helper of men, let every financial shame and reproach be turned to a testimony every family issue here represented marriages that are about to tear apart or have torn and in need of reconciliation issues with children spouses in the name of jesus let there be restoration
every career issue here represented in the name of jesus i decree and declare let there be testimonies let there be miracles let there be testimonies let there be miracles let there be testimonies let there be miracles in the name of jesus christ and hear me any long-standing issue that has been here for years for decades by the power that raised christ from the dead it comes to an end finally it comes to an end finally in the name of jesus therefore we decree and declare that the same hand that wrote this request may it be the same hand that receives a testimony for in jesus mighty name we pray for in jesus mighty name we pray hallelujah praise the name of the lord one last encouragement i want you to please listen to me it's been a burden in my heart and i've been crying it to believers as many who will hear that as we prepare for these times that we're living in there is a greater call from the spirit that we all become men of prayer men of the word and men of the secret place this will be my last and final charge we live in a time right now where believers are getting distracted or discouraged my conscience would not leave me in peace if i walk back to my seat without saying this there is a higher call a clarion call for his majesty that people we must return to the place of personal fellowship with the lord i'm not just talking about give me tea give me bread i'm not just talking of five minutes in the morning times when you can lock yourself and say lord it is me and you alone where you flog it out with destiny in prayer in the place of study of scripture social media is wonderful but that is it has become a tool that if not managed will be a demon that bedevils and distracts a generation we must obtain grace to manage these things and spend time because the strength of the believer is found in the secret place so my last charge to us courtesy the foundations of sapphire is that we become people of the secret place god is not a magician this is particularly true if there's any man of god here represented or following online you're not going to cross your hand leave the issue of god be careless and access end time power influence and grace god is not a magician are we together these things will happen on account of trust so let me give you a final word for those of us whose prayer lives have gone down so that it will not just be that we came and received miracles and went back uh -uh. god is more interested in your spiritual health than your finances your spiritual health thank god you are saved but to be saved is only one step that is not all there is so my final charge and my final call to everyone is that set the ambas the fire of your prayer life let it come afresh again prayer for the purpose of encounter and transformation not just receiving things number two be a student of scripture that is the antidote to error the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith and shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons we must obtain grace to be people of scripture to study to show ourselves approved unto god workmen that do not need to be ashamed and then number three your personal place with god every anointing has a consecration that preserves it hallelujah this is my final charge and to the king's court i am truly grateful and thankful to the foundations of sapphire thank you for all that you have done may the lord bless you in jesus mighty name we pray wave your hands to jesus been truly blessed today go ahead and bless the name of the Lord oh go ahead give God praise give God praise give God praise give him thanks give him a shout
Oh, clap your hands, oh, ye peoples. Oh, clap your hands, oh, ye peoples. Oh, clap your hands, oh, ye peoples. And shout to the voice of triumph. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 How many of you believe that apostle is a fertile ground, a fertile soil? I know your mind's already going in the grid of money. I'm not asking you to sow money. I know that wherever you hear sowing, you start thinking money. Amen. But you know, the law of harvest is not just about money. For the next one minute, okay, let's stretch your hands towards us and just pray, speak a blessing over him. And I assure you that based on the law of harvest, you will receive multiple fold. That blessing, that seed of prayer that you sow into his life will be multiplied unto you by the almighty God himself as seed sown in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Thank you. Mandebosa kata inarabosa limbra kata yanataba zelerebosa barianda rababa bababa lima mama maze la prakata baruka bali la brandebo santa branta ma inarabosa kata inarabaze la batata in Jesus mighty name we pray in the mighty name of Jesus and all of us together say God bless Apostle Selman Amen Amen thank you thank you Master Jesus have you been blessed you've been blessed thank you so we're here to give thanks to God the foundations of sapphires wants to come forward to give thanks to God for this awesome 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 two days awesome 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 blessings that God has ministered through Apostle Selman our lively stones and as I hand over to Sister Sandra to encourage every member, every foundation of Sapphire's member to come forth, let us thank God. And if you are a woman, whether you are a, a, a member of the foundations of Sapphire's or not, I will encourage you to come out as well. It's been God all the way. I don't know about you, but you see, my own reign of blessing started yesterday. Today was Jara. Tomorrow we are going to collect more. So let's just start thanking God now. What do you think? Okay, choir. <laughs> I serve a God who is powerful.
were to pray for the wonderful women in this church and while they are standing i want to request everyone to pray and i may please request that after my prayer our father as a father over this house he would just seal everything with a prophetic blessing praise the name of the lord can you stretch your hands and speak everything you want to see happen to our mothers go ahead and pray everyone declare let it be from the depth you, you may not you, you can stand feel free to stand our precious mothers but we are praying go ahead and pray go ahead and pray long life declare it health vitality peaceful homes children that are taught of the lord prosperity someone i like you to pray that everything that does not name the name of christ we drive far from these lives we drive far from our mothers we drive far from their homes in the name of jesus christ are you praying declare from the depth of your heart they have given so much they have invested their time their lives their energy resources that the lord of the harvest will replenish them a thousandfold in jesus name we pray as i pray please i'd like you to agree with me by shouting a believing amen in jesus name amen. father we thank you thank you so much for the foundations of sapphire thank you for their lives thank you for this prayer conference thank you for their organization their giving their love their labor we decree and declare according to scripture for the bible says the husband man shall be the first partaker therefore lord i decree and declare that every one of them that has given time energy effort resources you receive a hundredfold in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that your children are taught of the lord and great is their peace the shouts of victory shall not depart from your tent in the name of jesus christ the lord keep you in health the lord keep you strong the lord keep you loving jesus you will not fall by the wayside it is well with you well with your finances in the name of jesus and everything that has made you cry hitherto it comes to an end in the name of jesus as a fellowship you will only grow from glory to glory to glory next year will be greater than this year everyone who witnessed this year you must witness next year as a fellowship you will not bury anybody in the name of jesus christ and we decree and declare that when men say there is a casting down for every woman in this church and in this fellowship you will say there is a lifting up my god bless you my god lift you my god prosper you for in jesus mighty name we pray Amen. and heavenly father i agree with the apostle that you have sent oh god even unto your people this day to speak your word oh god over us and into the lives of your people that every word no word of his mouth will fall to the ground Amen. and every blessing oh god he has spoken over these women and much more shall be done Amen. to the praise and glory of your name Amen. and for that woman who's saying in her heart that at this conference they didn't address my specific issue i assure you and i speak prophetically into your life that which you have believed God for, even that will be done. Yeah. For the Lord who searches even the innermost recesses of man's heart knows that which is in your heart. Yeah. Thank you, precious Lord. You, Lord. Blessed be your name forever. Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. 
that no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.